But see, God has a plan and he has a, um, a, a miracle working um, strategy, you know, for all of us. And he wants us to understand that there's nothing impossible, nothing. You're praying for your family. You're praying for different situations. I love the story in, in Joshua too, where Rahab, we're here, this prostitute, they were Canaanites, they were wicked people. And the two spies went to Rahab. And, and, and they said to her, well, she actually said, listen, I'll hide you. I want you to take care of my family. Amen. Right? And so they said to her, well, as long as you, he goes, you put a scarlet cord, which, you know, of course, scarlet represents the blood, in your window. And he said, as long as you don't sell us out, he said, you'll be covered and protected. The beauty of that is God meets us all where we're at. So even if you never accepted Jesus as your Lord and Savior, even if, even let's say you're backslidden, let's say you've just been, you know, you don't even believe half this stuff, but you're just listening today. I want you to know if you speak, if you cry out to Jesus, he will make himself real to you. He will protect you. He'll turn things around for you. That's the amazing love that he has for his people. I mean, who would die on the cross? Right. Who would be willing? I, he was sweating blood. He knew what he was getting himself into. But he was willing to die. I thought, oh, my Lord, I don't know, Lord. But that's why he didn't ask any of us to do it. Because I thought, oh, Jesus, we don't be in problems, have a problem here because I don't know that I'd do it. But he did it. And so I'm grateful. So, you know, there's a scripture in Isaiah that says, and remember I told you about um, pleading the blood. So how do we deal with this? Because this is not an exhaustive teaching on the blood, but maybe we can do like a four-weeker on this because there's so much on it. But, you know, when, when we pray, one of the things that we do is we plead the blood of Jesus. We say, Lord, I, I plead the blood of Jesus over my family. I, I mean, in my house, I, I'll just, I draw the boundary of the blood of Jesus. I say, you cannot cross over in Jesus' name. And let me tell you, I have been involved in deliverance where I have said that and a person couldn't cross over the line. Right. There's power in the blood. Yeah. There's power in our faith. Right. It's not a little rabbit's tail. It's by faith. Right. And so yeah. to plead, um, there's, there's, um, the scripture here in Isaiah, I love this scripture, and I used to quote it all the time in ministry. Isaiah 43, 25 and 26, it says, I, only I, am he who wipes out your transgressions for my own sake, and I will not remember your sins. Remind me of your merits with a thorough, thorough report. Let us plead and argue our case together. State your position that you may be proved right. Now, that's, the, you know, the scripture where it's saying, for those of you that are tormented by mistakes... Those of you that are tormented by your past, that is the devil tormenting you. That is not God. He does not do that. It says here, I will remember your sins no more. When you repent of it and you go before the Lord and thank him for the blood that was shed, the cleansing blood, it purifies us. He remembers your sin no more. So when you are tormented and that thought goes over and over, the mistakes or why did I do this or the regrets, that is not God. It's not God. He doesn't torment us. He convicts us, but he doesn't torment us. And so that word plead there means a judicial term, and it means to judge, to govern, to vindicate, a lawgiver, to litigate, and to execute judgment. See, he says, Let, let's plead. So when we're pleading, we're governing. I am telling you, I, I am legislating here. I'm telling you, don't you cross over. And I plead the blood of Jesus over my family. I plead the blood of Jesus over my health. I plead the blood of Jesus over my finances, over my business. See, we can do that. We have that right to plead the blood. And so in Proverbs 23, 11, in the Amplified, it says, For the Redeemer is strong and mighty, and he will plead their case against you. See, he pleads on our behalf. And so, you know, you, you have to remember that the Lord goes before us. He's our covering. He's our shalom. He's our peace. And so the, because of the blood, the blood... <coughs> excuse me, if Jesus has given us access to go before the throne room of grace boldly. Amen. When I was in Israel, uh, I had this vision. It was just amazing. And um, I, I, we were just worshiping 
And, and I saw in my, my spirit these angels walk in, and they were carrying the mercy seat. And on the mercy seat, the blood was just saturated. I mean, it was just pouring over, and it was just dripping on, and then it came onto the earth, and on, you know, all, like on all over us. But I saw it go deep down into the earth, and, and the blood just loosened and saturated all the root systems. Yeah. And I knew the Lord was speaking to me about iniquitous structures and that his blood is able to go through the hard ground, the hard places to uproot issues, to uproot situations. His blood, there's mercy, the mercy of God that will allow us then to come before him no matter how hard or how difficult your situation is, how much involved in sin you are. That blood is able to break through the hardest of hardest situations. And set us free. And it was just so powerful. I mean, I really, I just, uh, that, that it just so ministered to me. And I was just so thankful to the Lord for that. And, and that I said, Lord, he said, it's my mercy. My mercy triumphs over judgment. You know, I mean, enough is enough with what's going on with the corruption. I mean, God's not mocked, but he loves us. And he wants us. He's, he's given us this opportunity to get right. He's given us an opportunity to cry out to God. As children, it's a privilege to hear what our Father has to say to us. It's, it's a privilege. And so the Holy Spirit wants us to know that, that he's a good God and that he loves us very much. There's a scripture in Philippians. I want to see the next page, and I'm going to be bringing this to a close. Um, because of the power of the blood, there's a scripture in Philippians 1.28 in the Amplified version, which I, I like, and it says here, in no way be alarmed or intimidated in anything by your opponents, for such constancy and fearlessness on your part is a clear sign of proof and a seal for them of their impending destruction, but a clear sign for you of deliverance and salvation, and that too from God. In other words, this scripture is saying to us, in no way are we to be afraid or alarmed by our enemy. For this, when we are fearless and we're trusting in the power of the blood, it is a clear sign and a proof for their impending destruction. And it's like, like we're just saying, you are doomed. We are not intimidated by you. We are trusting in our God. We are covered by the blood of Jesus Christ. That's what that scripture is talking about. And you are doomed, Satan. That's what it means. You are doomed. You are defeated because we choose to trust God in this time, even with, with what's going on with this virus, because I'm not crowning it. I'm not calling it corona. It's not crowned. It's a virus. It's under our feet. But it is under our feet, and we are not intimidated by what's happening because we choose to trust in God. The Bible says in Proverbs 3, trust in the Lord with all your heart and lean not on your own understanding and all your ways acknowledge him and he will direct your path. So I trust God and I'm not going to be afraid by what's happening. When you're battling, for those of you, if you're battling with fear, listen, God's right there with you. He's there. He's saying, listen, plead the blood of Jesus. Call upon my name. Ask me to help identify and deal with the, the worry and the fear. What is that accomplishing anyway? Other than messing with your immune system, what is it accomplishing? And so ask the Holy Spirit, ask the Lord, just say, Lord, forgive me for the fear that I'm experiencing. I choose to trust you, but help me. See, he meets us where we're at. He's not going to just say, well, that's your problem. You should have gotten over this a long time ago. That's not how he is. He's going to say to you, Come, come here, come and sit with me, you know, and, and, but renounce the fear, repent over the fear. And then just say, I renounce the spirit of fear. I renounce worry. I plead the blood of Jesus. You died on the cross for me. You took the crown of thorns on your head so that I don't have to be afraid. Right. You were brutally beaten. So I don't have to be broken and scared. Amen. Lord, thank you for what you've done for me. See, I mean, he's there with us. He never leaves us nor forsakes us.